Hey guys, Eric the Tech Guru here, and today I want to tell you a little something about malware. So when talking about malware, there are generally two types that you need to worry about. One is a computer virus, and the second is spyware. Now these two are both categorized under malware. So what is malware exactly? Well, the textbook definition is a piece of code that is designed specifically to disrupt or disable or damage a computer system. Then, what is a virus? Well, a virus is really just a piece of code that's capable of copying itself. Usually, it'll have a detrimental effect to a computer system, uh, deleting data or filling up a lot of space, but it doesn't actually have to be harmful. Remember, a virus is not necessarily made to hurt you or your computer. It's just a self-replicating piece of code. Most viruses are designed to hide themselves from your antivirus programs. That's why sometimes it's really difficult to get them off, and that's why your computer can bog down a whole lot. A polymorphic virus is the most dangerous type of virus. Really, though, it can change itself so it looks like it's a benevolent program on your computer. So. When your virus scan does a scan for viruses, it'll see it as maybe another virus protection program, and then your computer can't really do anything against it. This allows the program to gain higher security access levels on your computer and modify very sensitive information on your computer, disabling its functionality entirely or sneaking in and stealing files. Viruses can come in many shapes and sizes, and from many different parts of the internet. So always beware of any suspicious programs that are running on your computer. Be on the lookout in Task Manager for processes that have names you don't recognize or names that just don't make sense at all. Viruses are often contained in processes with very ambiguous names or they'll bind themselves to system processes. So if someone who goes in there and doesn't know what they're doing, they're afraid they're going to accidentally break their computer. So how do I protect myself against the virus? Well really, there are two main programs that you can use. One is called an antivirus, the other is called an anti-malware. These are both applications you install and run on your computer. Now they both behave differently. An antivirus program is an active defense system. What it does is it'll regularly scan your computer as well as monitor any existing programs for suspicious behavior. If it detects something, it should quarantine it automatically and let you know. That way, you can choose if you want to remove it from your computer or take it out of the quarantine because you know that it's a, not a harmful program. A few antivirus solutions that I suggest are 1. Avira Antivirus. I use Avira personally because it's fast, efficient, and it's free. It's great for managing any kind of antivirus scans that you want to run on a regular basis. It's also really good at detecting viruses automatically as soon as an application is run. A second choice is Avast Antivirus. Avast is great, but the user interface is pretty cheesy, it doesn't scan as efficiently as Avira, and it seems to take up more resources than Avira. So if you're running an older computer, that could slow you down a bit. AVG was my favorite antivirus program for three years, until last year when their database started slowing down. They have a free, fast and efficient antivirus. The only issue is support for it is starting to dwindle a bit as they are focusing more on their paid customers, where Avira gives the same support to their free and paid customers in terms of virus databases. If there is one antivirus program I do not recommend whatsoever, it is Norton Internet Security. Now, you may have had Norton pre-installed on your computer. That is because the only way that Norton sells anything is by pre-installing it on other computers by making deals with manufacturers. Norton is an ancient technology. Although they do have really up-to-date databases, their software is super slow and really bogs down old computers. So stay away from Norton if you can, and if you've already got a subscription, let it run out and then hop onto a nice free antivirus. What about anti-malware? Well, anti-malware is a passive application. Most anti-malware applications you will run on your own, initiated at a specific time. It will do a full system sweep, it'll scan every process, it'll scan every file on your computer, at least that's what you should tell it to do, and it will compare it against some very, very up-to-date databases. It looks for all kinds of suspicious activity that is found among Trojan viruses, or pups, or potentially unwanted programs, and it'll ask you before any action that it does. 
These anti-malware tools are something you should run once every week or once a month at least. The first anti-malware tool that I recommend is Anti-Malware Bytes. Now, Malware Bytes is a fantastic tool. It's existed for a long time and it's really well supported. There is a completely free version you don't have to pay for, and it may try to install a premium trial for you. Just ignore that, tell it not to, because the free version is all you need. Another tool I recommend is Combo Fix. Combo Fix was created by Bleeping Computer, which is a internet security forum that's made for all kinds of IT professionals who post all kinds of questions that they might have and discuss all kinds of issues on the forum. Combo Fix was put out a few years ago, probably six or seven years ago, and it's an excellent tool that does a really, really deep clean of any malware and potentially unwanted programs you may have on your computer. Combo Fix is not for the faint of heart. It can be pretty damaging if you don't configure it right because you have to elevate it so it can go in really deep and rip out any malware that might be hiding in system files. Always be sure to back up your system before running Combo Fix because if you do end up with a non-functioning operating system, you're going to want to revert back and scan with malware bytes or another tool. That's all for now. Tune in next time to see what exactly is spyware and who those creeps are that are watching you through your webcam. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down depending on how you feel. If you have feelings more complicated than a thumbs up or a thumbs down, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I will respond as soon as I can. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you next time. Aerial Tech Guru signing off.